When Van Diathevan finished telling the story of his visit to Animalai Forest, Kundave looked at him and said, Sir. The story you told is very amazing. Sometimes I even doubted whether it was true. I know that they are good at telling stories. Moreover, they often stop talking and look up and down. My suspicions grew even more when I started talking. She said. Van the van and looked up and down once towards Kundave. Goddess. There are other places to tell fiction. I have never shown them that skill of mine before. There is another reason why my speech stops at intervals. He said. Is that a big secret too? Shouldn't you tell the girls? Asked Kundave Prati. A secret not to be told to anyone else. But if you give me permission I will. Van the van said. You always have my permission to tell the truth. Said Kundave. Then I'll tell you, then it's no use getting angry with me. Sometimes, while I'm talking to them, my gaze accidentally catches their eyes. I don't know what rare magic is in the black eyes of the goddess. It makes me stand there in such a daze. I manage to speak again. He said. The petals of Kundave spread, cheeks sunken, the eyes smiled. Sir. There is no rare magic in my eyes. There is no black magic. I have long given up flattery. You would have seen your own image in my eyes. That would have astonished you. She said. Goddess. I've seen my image in mirrors. I've seen it reflected in clear water. I've never been so dazzled. Said Valavarayan. Do you compare my eyes to glass and water? The glass will be dim, the water will be troubled. Said the princess. I will clean the mirror when it is tarnished. I will keep the water undisturbed. Can't I stop their eyelids from closing and veiling my image? Van the van said. The image is reflected only when standing in front of a mirror. The image is visible only when the water is clear and undisturbed. But whether my eyes are open or closed, whether they are in front of me or not, their image always shines in my eyes. Can you tell me what is the cause of this miracle? Kundave asked. Van Diathevan's voice was thrilled. I don't know, Devi. He said. If you don't know, I'll tell you. There is some kind of magical power in them. Isn't the spirit of Nandini, who has come to take revenge on the Chola clan, troubled by seeing them? A moment ago you thrilled me with the word Amuthanumaniya. In the same breath, why are you mentioning the name of that deadly poisonous dragon? There was a time when I hated Nandini as a venomous snake. Now when I think of her, I feel pity for her. To show mercy to Nandini is to show mercy to the eternal poison that destroys the Chola clan. Sir. She is the daughter of Goddess Mandakini, who became the family goddess of the Chola dynasty. She is the daughter of the goddess who saved my dear brother Arul Mazai many times. Nandini, the daughter of Madarasi, who sacrificed her life to save my father from falling prey to the plotters. But she was the one who made that conspirator throw his job. She was the one who came as Yama to Aditha Kari Kalar. She was the one who seduced and swayed the matriarch of the heroic warrior like a toy. Has Matundana seduced the great Palyavatarayar's mother? She has made Parthapendra of Paul Avan, Kanamaran, and others her tools. Even knowing all this, I could not hate her. She did so much to avenge the death of Veera Pandaya. She succeeded in accomplishing what she had set out to do. A girl from the heroic clan. To think that I was also the reason for her to indulge in such terrible deeds. It's sad. We kicked her out of the old room in her childhood. You have done a good thing. Devi. Don't forget that she is the daughter of a Chola clan enemy because of their abundance of blood. Is not the calamity caused by the son of Veera Pandya growing up in a Chola house? If the daughter of Veera Pandya also grew up in a Chola house and happened to marry Adita Kari Kalar, it would have been very good, the enmity of these two great clans would have ended and the two clans would have become one clan. But was that news true? What are you asking, goddess? Is it true that Nandini is Veerapandian's daughter? 
I heard with my own ears what Nandini said to Adithakari Kalar. The great Palyavataraya also heard. That changed the mind of the great Palyavataraya completely and made him take Rajrakara. That fatal word became Yama for the life of Prince Adithakari Kalar. Think about it. Couldn't she have said that to take revenge on Kari Kalan? She herself said otherwise when she wanted to save Veera Pandian from Karakalan's wrath. Would any woman have said lover with her own mouth about her biological father? Devi. Kari Kalar was mad then. Who knows what she said, what he meant. What Kari Kalar said. Did he believe Nandini when she said my father was Veera Pandian? And she might have known this only after Veera Pandian's death. The truth about her birth. Do they know what efforts Nandini went through to find out? Didn't she beat Sundara Chola mad in the middle of the night pretending to be her mother's ghost? Didn't their friend faint after seeing that? They would have known what all Alwarkadian said when he scared the madman who was freed with them after three years in the underground prison. Don't know? He said that he is the father of Nandini and her brother. Couldn't that be true? Well, sometimes a lie is too strong. You would have been amazed to see how old Madhurand Hakadivar, who grew up inside the palace and was afraid of fighting, became a brave man when he learned that he was the son of Veera Pandayan. Once the little pule of Etere grabbed my shoulder with his wiry arm. I still feel pain in the place where he held it. Dot I will never forget the scene where Madhurand Hagen, who thought we were all cowards, fought with such a great hero. I said that I also doubted their word on that. It was a rare thing to believe. Who could believe that the mad Huron Thakan we know who travelled in Nandini's Mudupalak and trembled at the mention of the Palyavatare's name would dare to do battle with the little Palyavatare? Yet all Warkadian would come back and tell them that it really happened. Sir! Can't you see Nandini Devi? Why should I see the monster that woman has become? Don't talk about Nandini like that again. I'll meet her myself one day. I'll actually know the secret of who her father is. But no one thing. Don't say anything wrong to me about Nandini. Whoever her father is, there's no doubt about who her mother is. For me to love her. That alone is enough, above that there is another important reason. What's the reason for that? Nandini was fond of them. She gave them her signet ring. She helped them escape from the Tanjore fort. She again saved their lives when they were trapped by Ravidasan's gang in the Kalatok Kare forest. Finally, she laid the terrible blame of killing Aditha Kari Kalar on me and did all the tricks for it. Don't they know why she did that? Do you want to explain why a snake bites? Why do you want to explain why a leopard leaps? Nandini was not born as a snake or a leopard when she was born. We made her that way. Chances conspired that way. You were also responsible for that. Alas! Why blame me in vain? What harm have I done to her? You did her no harm. She was the one who loved you. God! Men seem to be blind to some things. Sir, listen to this. They don't know Nandini's heart. I know very well. That rascal has no real love for Veera Pandian. She has no real love for Aditha Kari Kalan. She only pretends to love them so that she can sit on the government bench. I know this too, goddess. There is little room for love in her adoring bosom. That was wrong. It was only when she saw themselves that true love dawned within her. She was willing to do anything to win their admiration. She was willing to blame me for killing the prince. What is that for? It is to keep themselves out of friendship and relations with the Chola clan forever. For that, she has arranged for me to be washed at the intersection of Tanjavar Raja roads. Could she have killed me with the knife she held in her hand? If they had intended to kill themselves, they might have done so. Or Ravi Dasan might have caused them to be killed by the mob. If the great Palyavatare had not blamed himself, and if Pani's Selvar had not intervened, if Ravi Dasan had really ordered them to be washed, Ravi Dasan's men would have come and freed themselves. They too would probably have joined the crowd gathered on Animali today. God saved me from such an accident. They saved the Chola country too, 
and saved the Chola Empire from losing the service of a warrior like them. Goddess! The Chola Empire is great. Five hundred locks of warriors with swords and lances guard this kingdom like eyes. I alone cannot be so necessary for its help. You yourself said that new dangers beset the Chola country on all sides. That's true, Devi. Ravi Dasan's cunning skills are amazing. The owner has created two people for the Pandya country. Earlier, he crowned a small child as the Pandya king in Kalitkare forest. Along with that Barangazan Nedunchezayan, now Amara Bujanan Nedunchezayan has joined. Who is Amara Bujangan Nedunchezayan? That is now the name of our old Madhurand Hagar. Is it not possible for the Pandyan government to have the name Madhurand Hagan? When the small Pula Vetareya fell into the ravine, the hilltop shouted Long Live Pandyan Amara Fujangan Nedunchezayan. The chant that arose drowned out the sound of the great waterfall. What will Ravi Dasan's group benefit from establishing two such owners? If anything happens to one of them, let the other be in hand. They will try to get help from King Mahinda of Sri Lanka with one, and get the king's cooperation with the other. Sir! My brother and yourselves conspired and put the bell crown on the head of the noble Chola. I do not think you have done the noble Chola much good. Carrying the burden of the Chola Empire does not seem such an easy task at present. Carrying the burden of the Chola Empire is a very trying task at present. But is Adama Chola going to bear it? He is going to spend his time helping his mother by doing temple work. The one who is going to bear and protect the Chola Empire is their brother Arul Mazai Devar. That is true. Arul Mazai has the power to do so. But he is small in spirit and inexperienced. The two great pillars of the Chola Empire, the Palyavar kings are gone. The Great One has left us. From what they say, it seems rare that even the little Palyavetare survives. Even if he survives, he will be of no use to the kingdom. He will be worried about his daughter and son-in-law. Sambuvarayar also reached the same state. In a few days his mind and body became tired and weak. Malay Aman was already an old man. When one of his grandsons died and there was no title for another, he too became completely weak. The mind of the great Velar of Kajumbalar was not in a state. Arul Mazai was saying that he was going to be crowned and deceived him at the last minute. He could not forgive what he had done. He was not even satisfied with the marriage of Arul Mazai to Vanati. He left saying that he would not interfere in the affairs of the kingdom from now on and was going to restore the temple in Kajumbalar. All the other petty princes who participated in the conspiracy in the Kadampur mansion were ashamed and depressed because they had ended up thinking something else. Sir! Arul Mazai needs partners to help. He needs close friends who are intelligent and capable of pain in the sword pain in the shoulder. Fortunately there is Pallava Parthapendra. Vandiyathevan said. It is not to say that Arul Mazai will get his partner's pain. He is angry that he was sent away from the city and crowned as the best Chola. More than that, he does not like Arul Mazai to be his intimate companion. His anger is justified. He has done so much charity to the Chola clan. I am a newcomer. I will apologize to him if I want. Kundeva thought for a while and said, It's like adding oil to a burning fire. Is there no other way to appease the great warrior Parthibendra? Vandiyathevan said. He himself indicated the way and expressed his desire to my father. Emperor would not have refused to fulfill the wish of Parthipendra Pallavar. But it does not suit the emperor. It depends on his daughter. His daughter refused to accept it. Yes, sir. The Pallava clan could not bear the appearance of the man who was taking flowers to the temple suddenly mounted on a lion and crowned with bells. She who was leaving a boat in the sea could not bear it when the lion mounted. To the old Pallava country he asked him to make himself an independent king and give him the right to write Silas Asinam. Aha! How can that be given? Isn't it to put the Chola kingdom on the back burner? My father agreed to give that right. And the Pallava Kumaras did not stop. Once a Pallava king's daughter married a Chola son. In return, he demanded that Sundara Chola's daughter be given in marriage to him. 
Hearing this, Vandiyathevan's face showed great anguish. He turned his face away to hide it. Kundave's face lit up with a smile. She purposely did not say anything above. Vandiyathevan asked, What did the emperor say to that? He said. How can the emperor answer that? Isn't it about his daughter's choice? The emperor asked for his daughter. What did the empress reply to that? He has said that he does not agree to arrest Parthibendra. Why? Why? Vandiyathevan's voice was filled with unbridled curiosity. Lady Chakraborty gave the reason. She said that she did not want to leave the country where the goddess Pawnee River flows and go abroad. Is that the same reason? There may be another reason. Don't you want to tell people who have trouble with it? Why tell people who ask about something? She said squat. Goddess. Asking with immense effort and eagerness. Those who are hard enough and curious enough will figure it out on their own. They don't need to be told. Vandiyadeva saw Kundave's face as if he were seeing it for the first time. Lightning struck lightning. Wave after wave crashed. Heaven came to earth. Earth became heaven. Crouching in the horizon with a venomous grin, what does a man think of a man who cannot know what is on a woman's mind and expects her to speak through her mouth? How can he expect to know all the tricks of the enemies of the Chola Empire? She said. Vandiyathevan looked up and down for a while and said, Goddess. What would the emperor think of an orphan boy who had no shade and a hut to live in? making the same request as Parthibendra, who came from the legendary Pallava clan. He said. Whatever he thinks, he will ask what his daughter wants. He will answer accordingly. Goddess. What will the emperor's concubine answer? Would it be difficult for me to ask around like this? Can I ask the emperor in person? The answer will be known immediately. Said Kundave. How can you ask that? How can a nameless boy who lives in a village dare to ask an orphan boy who has no relatives to marry the daughter of a king who rules under the shadow of an umbrella from Elam to Venji? Said Valavarayan. Where did a warrior born of the monkey clan get such self-control? I have not forgotten what you said about the pride of your clan when you first saw me. You said that if a male child was born in the palaces of the Charachola Pandyas, if the child's chest was broad, then the queens would be delighted to write all the names of Mavalivana on the child's chest. The monkey clan. At the gate of the king's palace the Muvandras would wait, and the poets, seeing the gifts they would receive from the goddess, would say, This is my horse. This is my elephant. This is my crown. This is my umbrella. You also said that they would talk about it. Why is he who is so proud of himself so humble? Aromas Hivarman hates to be distinguished by his younger brother Sine Condon. He laughs at the fact that they boast that they are descended from the Surya clan, Karikala Valavan dynasty, Vijayalaya Chola's grandson. Do you know what he said to me one day? These are the ancestors of my clan. Until now, whenever the copper plagues and Silasasanas are written, they have been written starting from the Surya dynasty, Manu Nidhi Chola, and Sibik Emperor. If I ascend to the throne, I will change this practice. I will engrave only the things I have achieved in the Silasasanas and copper plagues that I write. He said. Devi. I also agreed with his opinion. I decided to let go of the old clan pride. I will not go to their fathers and claim the privilege of holding them in my old clan glory. Aromas Hivarmar and I have devoted our lives to the greatness of this Chola Empire. We have decided to fly the tiger flag on Vindhya Parvatam in the north, Trikana Hill in the south, Lakshadweep in the west, Savak, Kataram, and Kamboha across the seas in the east. After accomplishing the things we have undertaken to some extent, go to the Sundara Chola Emperor and give him permission to put the garlands of victory that I have been wearing on the neck of his Thirakumari. I will apply that. Go to Ceylon and conquer Mahinda and Pandian Crown. Indra will also bring the harem and place it in front of the princess. He said, if I am worthy to hold their hands, grant me that privilege. I will proudly ask that. I will look for the orphan boy who entered the palace garden and met me alone, 
if he is somewhere among all the royal sons. It is on his neck that I will place the Swayamvara garland in my hand. A thousand hymns rang in Vandiyadeva's ears. Golden rain fell from the sky. Shoots and flowers were painted on the tops of the swaying trees and insects danced with their feathers spread out. Vandiyadeva, who had been sitting till now, stood up. Didn't you like what I said? said Kundave. You have heard well. I checked to see if I was awake and what I heard was true, or whether I was dreaming. I was not dreaming. I found it to be true. I have heard that the gods reached the elixir by holding the ocean of milk. They drank it and became immortal. The words they just spoke made me elixir. I was revived. They have provided. Kundave then said, Sir. Remember only one thing. You will face many dangers in your destinations. You will fight in many battlefields. Enemies will try to send you to the upper world by deceitful maneuvers. If something like that endangers their lives, a princess born in this long proud Chola clan will be married before getting married. Alas! Don't forget this! She said. You will shine as a life-saving light from the lighthouse at night when the seas are rough and the crocodiles are hitting the rocks along the coast. With that brightness I will bring my boat to the shore without hitting the rocks. You will help me as the river of life, surrounded by coconut trees and honey bees, when I am thirsty in the desert region where no grass or garlic sprouts. Goddess! No matter where I go in this wide and wide world, no matter how hard I go, I will come back one day. I will come back and hold their hands and marry them. Yama will not approach me till this my desire is fulfilled. In this way Vandiyadeva sat down talking like never before in his life. The younger Brady looked at his face, mesmerized. It seemed to her that this warrior had not told her all these words for the first time, and that she had heard the same words from him many times in the past ages. As she pondered the strangeness of this paranoia, she cried out, Sister! Sister! Vanatha's voice was heard. Both looked back. Vanati hurried to them and said, Sister! He has received an urgent letter. It has come from Kandamaran, Damayan of Manamekali. She held out the straw while saying that.